following scene you're about to see was just a test. Three different cameras were used. The GH5, GoPro 10, and DJI, Maverick 2, Joy. The main goal was to try and color match each camera, but it snowballed into this little scene. Being it started as a test, framing, and green screen was not taken into account during filming, so you will have to ignore that. At the end of the scene there is a little behind the scene of how this was put together. So here we go. Uh, as said in, <clears throat> in the beginning there, uh, this was just a test. So there was a lot of things that were taken for granted on it. Uh, what I originally did was use three different cameras, the GH5, GoPro 10, and uh, DJI drone, uh, Maverick 2 drone. Uh, obviously, the drone wasn't up and flying within the room. It was just propped up on side of a door, on the top of a doorway, uh, and then just used a video recording on that. Uh, so what I originally did was filmed everything. Brought all the clips into DaVinci to resolve, took them all, highlighted them all, created a new compound clip out of them, which is what you're seeing right now in front of you with everything chopped up. Uh, went through and did a color grade on them all, which I'll show you a little bit of that real quick. Color tab. Bring this down. I'll shut off some stuff here. <clears throat> so the first note I started with was just a garbage mat. That's what it originally looked like. Tossed on the garbage mat just to get what I, a rough a rough idea of what I wanted. After that, wanted to do uh, the green screen key. And then after that, did the color match. Uh, those three nodes right there, I just mimicked that through the other two cameras. The GH5, or the GoPro 10 and the DJI drone. Uh, and you'll see over here. Went through, chopped up each clip so I can kind of get it to flip from clip to clip. Uh, right now you're seeing the GH5, that's the GoPro 10, and then that's the drone. Uh, color match on them all came out fairly well. Uh, first time around, I'm kind of happy with it. Uh, after this stage right here, I was wondering what it would look like if I brought this into Blender and had like a model in the background. So, oops, excuse me. So is what I did is went on to, where is it? Uh, the Turbo Squid site found let me get a clip here found this model of the uh sci-fi hallway right here here's a couple clips of it uh <clears throat> here's a url on the top and there's a link to that there'll be a link to that in the description uh brought this into blender did a bit of a color grade on it did some texturing got it to how i wanted it uh and then within blender just exported a single clip of it which I'll show you in a second. Go up here, single clip. Uh, exported this single clip right here, which you're seeing. This is the uh, texturing and the coloring and everything done to it with the lights and blah, 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 blah. Uh, took this clip right here, this compound clip in DaVinci Resolve, created a new timeline, which you'll see right here. Uh, Added that compound clip, the all green screen that we were looking at over here on the left. Drop that on there. 
took the spaceship that was exported, the single image that was exported from Blender, tossed that in the background, and used that single clip as a reference to try to color grade the green screen. Uh, it seemed like color grading in DaVinci Resolve is a little bit easier than uh, doing it in Blender, at least it is for me, just starting off with all this stuff. Uh, you can see right here I highlighted it. As far as the color grade on this goes, the only thing I did was actually dropped a lot onto it. Uh, kind of got lucky, did the Alexis to 709, the RET 709. Uh, right there you can see the green screen, how it was through the color matching earlier. And then dropped the LUT on it, and it pretty much kind of got everything pretty close to what I was hoping for. Uh, being that this was just a test, and didn't put too much effort into that. So, after I got <clears throat> the green screen clips color graded to match the background image, disabled the background image. Now we just got the green screen clips here all tied in together. Moving around, blah, blah, blah. You can see after adding that LUT. You look at some of the monitors, it changed some stuff. Uh, I just live with that, uh, being I was just playing around with this. Uh, so now that all the green screen clips are somewhat matched to the spaceship image, exported all the green screen clips from DaVinci Resolve, they went to a sim uh, image, excuse me, an image sequence, uh, saved that, imported that image sequence to Blender which we got right here. Uh, back out of here. Here's the spaceship corridor model that was downloaded with the link in the description. Look under here. Right there is the image sequence. Imported that as an image sequence to planes, I believe it's called. Shift A. <clears throat> image. Images as planes. Imported that all the clips, all the sequence as images as planes. Once here into Blender, took that image plane, parented it to the camera, and then started doing camera movements. I'll show you right now. So if you look at over here on the right, you'll see some of the rotation that's going to happen over here. The, the Z is the main one that was being used throughout the whole thing. Discovered if I rotated the Z within Blender, uh, plus 10 degrees or minus 10 degrees. It wasn't breaking the image plane too much. Uh, let me get rid of these bars for a second. Sorry about that. So if I was rotating the Z plus 10 degrees and minus 10 degrees, it wouldn't break the image, image plane too much. Uh, if you pay attention to this corner right here, comparing the image plane to the model in this corner down here, comparing the image plane to the model, it stays fairly parallel throughout the movement. Uh, originally what I did was get the uh, camera angle how I wanted it to, keyframe that. If I was off by, we're gonna say, right here is the beginning key. Right now I got the Z rotated five degrees as you see over here on the right. Uh, I would have went and originally this is what I did. Uh, I would go into the image plane and take the image plane and put a negative value of five degrees to match everything up. I went through, I did that a bunch and realized that was a whole lot of keystrokes uh, and a whole lot of keyframing that was unnecessary. Uh, backtracked and what I ended up doing is taking the image plane, putting a constraint on it, targeting the camera inverting the x which is a tilting up and down and the z which just creates the parallax going side to side or the rotation side to side uh and that automatically whenever i keyframed something in the camera at an angle <clears throat> it automatically inverted the rotation of the image plane and kept everything parallel for me uh i can show you what it looks like without that constraint so we'll disable the constraint and then we got to flip this around a little bit Ooh, 90 so now if you pair it now if you pay attention to the image plane in the bottom right hand corner over here compared to the model and the same thing on the left you 
and notice what's going on right there. Everything's kind of a little wonky, and it's not staying parallel. Uh, it's still giving a bit of a parallax to it, and you know when you look to the view to the left, you're actually getting more of the image with uh, image of the green screen. Uh, seeing beyond there, like you see more of the back, uh, the model in the background, which is you know what our eyes would see. But I don't know the the rotating like that just didn't look too good. So let me put this back to 180 and enable it, <clears throat> and this gave a little bit more of a natural feel to me. Uh, so got all the camera keyframes done. There's some zooming in here. Uh, each of the green screen camera cuts, when it was cutting frame to frame, one cut, this is actually from the drone, which is off to the right, looking down to the left. Uh, I wanted to do the same thing, it's, which was the reason why we created the camera movement, is the same thing for the model, so the model is kind of uh, coherent and consistent with that. Uh, after I got all this said and done, I uh, did an export of an image sequence of all this. I believe there was some... Composing done. Was I right on that? Uh, I don't have nothing done. Did do a bit of composing onto it. Uh, I would image this out. Yeah, there's no images here. That's going to take too long to render out a frame. Uh, did some defocusing on it. Uh, maybe I will. I'll do this and cut back. Alrighty, we're back here. Uh, so to do a little bit of a um, compositing here, we got first off, I used the depth pass here and the mist pass. The mist pass you see right there. Uh, so I can add a little bit of a depth to the scene, then added and then added a little bit of a defocus for the background here. Uh, tried doing that with a camera and the depth of field, but didn't have much luck. It didn't work how I wanted to. I wanted to, all the focus to be on just the green screen, and that wasn't panning out for me. Uh, being that I was kind of new to that, I just skipped over that and discovered this defocusing in the, com in the comp page or composition tab and ended up going with that. That worked out pretty well. Uh, also added a bit of a glare to some of the lights and stuff like that. As you see, they popped up right here, and then just mixed mixed them down together. <clears throat> and that was probably about it. And as you see right there, everything just popped into the back. Uh, that's pretty much about it through the whole thing. Uh, it was fairly simple, and the end result didn't come out too uh, didn't come out too bad for the time invested into it. And also being that, like I said in the beginning, it was just a test. So some of the green screen work you'll notice, and some of the camera angles under the computer screen right there, uh, it gets all blotchy from things getting highlighted and not doing a, a good job highlighting or good job lighting the green screen. But that was all about it. The end result brought that back into DaVinci Resolve and I believe I did a final, yeah, excuse me, brought that back into DaVinci Resolve, added these permanent black cinema bars on the top, as you'll see them disappearing right there in the beginning added them up and that was just an image of cinema bars did a bit of a sound work to it the voice that you hear in the very beginning of that that was a robotic voice that was off of the uh ibm watson site the free site uh after i got a voice and got it all situated how i wanted it uh brought that into uh what was the DAW used uh reaper did a little bit of a sound editing to that added the echo effect to it so it sounds like it's in a chamber and created a quick little uh, atmospheric background to it and that was about it uh did a final render of that and that's what you got to see in the beginning uh hope all this was a little informative or helpful to people uh completely new to all this as you've seen with any other videos that i've done uh this is just a hobby uh had a lot of fun with it and just wanted to share the process i use and maybe somebody could find it helpful and also Anything that you've seen I've done through this and you know a better way or a more efficient way, easier way, whatever, just flat out different way, uh, please comment about it. I'm definitely up for learning anything new. I uh, hope this was all uh, helpful or fun to you or however you wanted to take it. And take care of yourselves.